Hello, I'm Harrison Burnett with My Horse 7. We represent the whole horse. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Sharon Roberts and her administrators and staff for signing me to be the official trainer for AHI. I hope you enjoy these videos. With horses, I'm constantly a work in progress, learning from the horse, how to get the best out of them, and how to get the best out of myself and out of life. If you have questions or feedback, you can contact me at via info at thewholehorse.net. I look forward to helping you and your horses. I hope this video gives you something to look forward to in these trying times. It will get better, and in our lives, we are blessed with the company of our horses. Look for our new videos and roundtable discussions. Thank you again, AHI and the whole horse for your support. Hello, my name is Harrison Burnett and this is my horse seven. He's a rescue horse what I call a project horse, I'm his last stop. And he's been through a lot. He was gonna to go to the bucking string or to the, or something even more severe than that. So I've got him and I like him. And uh, he's still a work in progress and I am too. So, but uh, we would like to talk about position of the rider today. And Seven's gonna help me. And there's no mechanical means to explain position. Position is an intuitive feel. It's a feel. It's intuition. It's intuited. And there's no way to, you got, you're on, there's a human and a horse here and it's very intimate. So it has to be, but it's very simple. But a lot of people get bad muscle memory in position by leaning, by getting in a chair seat, uh, getting too far back, uh, their legs are out. And the way you operate the horse movement is these nerve patches right under my legs here. They're proximate, they're like that. And that's where you get your stimuli to engage the hind legs, the lumbar sacrum, to get your motion. So my position on the ground would be just like I'm in a comfortable stance, my knees are bent, my knees are just over my toes. My femur, and my ear, my femur, and my ankle should line up. That's the same position I want on the horse. If you walked a horse under me right here and I was on blocks and I just went into the horse. Now, if our position's off, we can't apply our aids. Well, what's our aids? We've got our weight, we have our legs, and we have our hands. The first thing we've got to do is control our mind to control our body so we can hopefully control, help control his mind to control his body. And any, it's all economy of motion. There's no, no sign, there's no nothing, there's no formula for it. And it's all feel, it's all submitting to the movement of the back. That's all you're doing, is submitting to the movement of the back in this, with your body aligned. So now, and you study this the rest of your life. This is something you get better at as you get older. It's very encouraging. And it's something you do less to get more. It's uh, about the only thing I know of that you can do that in, other than maybe the martial arts. Um, you do less and less to get more power. You take away the non-essentials and you keep the essentials. What's the essentials? Your position and doing the least you can to get the job done with a horse. Horse training is all about control. Control of the horse's feet. And you've got to have this right, the brain in here, his mind, 
his spirit has to be settled for him to be able to to operate, to uh, you communicate with him and he can commu communicate back. It's a feel following a feel. I'm feeling to him, I hope he feels to me. So, I've got a 4x4 four four here. Just to get in your mind about balance. Nothing can survive without balance. Nature, nothing in nature survives without balance. It dies or it just has a hard time living. So, the 4x4 four four is balanced about right there. If I put this on my shoulder, it's balanced. I can carry that. If it weighed twice as much as me, I could carry this. But if it's back here, that feels really bad. If you set too far up, it feels bad to the horse. If you get right behind the withers, it's a sweet spot. Boom. And that's very important to remember. If Julie would come out and wiggle this while I walk. Now, if you get out of position, the art of riding a lot, many times is the art of not interfering once the horse is in movement. You can't interfere with their balance by exaggerated movement. No. no. You don't move for them, you use the nerve patches and you just go with their back. You submit to the movement of the back and then you know where the feet are and you know what the footfalls are. So I'll have Julie, I start to walk with this, now you wiggle it. You know, I, see, I, I don't like that. Because, that, that. Remember that when you ride your horse. That's, that's simple, but a lot of people sit to one side or the other. They, here and there. Even if I'm jumping a fence or I'm getting rough terrain, the angle, I don't want my angle of my leg to get back here or way up here. I want it to stay in here as much as possible. My body can tip up to get the horse to extend his stride. When I come back, it should get more power and shorten its stride and carry more weight back. Not just shorten, but get that weight back. And I'll ride him here a little bit. So, this applies to any discipline. It doesn't matter if you've got a dressage saddle on him, a stock saddle, cross cut, I don't care. It's the same position or the principles there. And the longevity of this horse and my, long, and my back, my posture is, should be good. So his spine can stay. If he's crooked, if he's unbalanced, he's gonna strike the ground hard. I want him to, I want him to touch the ground like he's sneaking into a camp and you don't want anybody to hear you. Like he's coming home late and it's, uh, he don't want to get caught. I want him to be, just barely touch the ground. So if he's hitting the ground hard, that shot goes up to his legs, bam, goes to his back. It comes from his back down. He has to move, horses don't just move, they can't move their legs out. They move their whole hind quarter or their forehand, that shoulder, to get power. God made them to where they move straight. And not only when you do exercises with them that I'm not going to get in today on two tracking and crossing them they're still they're using that whole quarter to get that foot to cross over so if I were playing polo or if I were roping <coughs> I would want if I were playing polo here or roping or using my whip to get a wild cow back I would want this, I would want my position to stay the same. I wouldn't want to get in his way. You see what I did then? He's like, oh, you, what are you doing? He doesn't like that. He doesn't feel good. And my position is supple. It's like if you took a bag of water and you just set it on his back. If, you're, if you were like water, if you think about that, it would help you a lot. If you could just, how does water work? Well, the molecules just go wherever they want. You can't crush them, you can't hurt them. And they just settle perfect, like water levels. So if I put a, 
a, a Ziploc bag of water on his back, perfectly balanced. That's the way I want to set. Now I am going to get off his back for a light seat to gallop. Now I'm going to use my stirrups, but this, but I, boy, I want to be so supple in my in my hips and in my back, and I'm riding with my seat bones. So if my pelvic girdle is straight, his pelvic girdle should be straight. It's all about calm, straight, and forward with these horses and control. So I'll, now if my position is right, he shouldn't need those reins to take a circle here. And then when I come down to walk, he should just walk because it feels good for him to come up under me and then back down. That feels good. He gets under my weight up here. It's okay. He gets under my weight up here and he comes back and he gets more. Then he starts carrying more weight. You don't just want him to get short. You want him to get strong and carry more weight. And that's all training is about, is control. This control when these feet leave the, leave the ground, you can control them. It says they, he got a little excited then, so we'll back him up. He's project horse. There. His rear. He was... Uh, he got spurred pretty bad and he bucked the people off. And he, they said he bucked hard enough to be a PRC or Bronx, but I didn't want him to buck. I wanted him to be a good boy, so he didn't need any bucking today. But he's nervous. What he's nervous about still is my legs. So my position, now see he's there. We'll back, we're reining back. Now my position in this rein back is supple, and I'm riding back with my legs, but I have to be centered. There you go, buddy. So, if I can just get a, there, you got a weight transfer, that was okay. But he's been put through a lot. The position something we work on our whole life. He's not got much warm up time. I want him back under me. I want him up. I want him back. I want him up. Back. Up. We need to get to moving. Do another demonstration about he's tight and he doesn't have much. He's kind of goosey. So we're going to get to moving here. Now, how can I make this horse more goosey and more apprehensive because he's already been tortured and he's already learned how to buck people off? Get stiff. All I got to do is get stiff and hit his back like a hammer. He's not going to like that. And that any horse. No horse is like that. That's what holds up your development of their training. So, the canter is the same way. I come back, he comes back. I come back a little farther, he comes back. Everything is from here to your hands. And uh, now I'll go over a little thing with my hands before we get we get done here. Get in the middle, baby. Our elbow, in schooling a horse, if I want to school this horse to run bridleless, which I'm going to do, or a neck rope or without the bridle, I've got to have him, his hind legs hooked to that bit and his front legs hooked to that bit. From from my body to his to his feet.
there. So it's just a feel following a feel. And it's a beautiful thing. This is a living art. It's an art that lives. Remember that. And a lot of this... A lot of these things are just out for, they're just here for the taking if you have the intuition and uh, and you everything's gradual in horsemanship so I hope this uh, helps I hope that you uh, you might have to work your muscle memory backwards like this horse's muscle memory is backwards he's a he's apprehensive still about my legs or about a lot of things and I have to if I do anything wrong it shows up real bad um, but it's uh, it's a beautiful thing and I hope you got something out of this um, calm straight and forward thanks for watching